Sonic. He's been going a while, hasn't he? He may have had a few road bumps along the way. What the hell is this? But I'm still a massive fan of this series. It's produced some of my favorite games of all time. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Mania, Sonic Generations, and best of all, Sonic Schoolhouse. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic is best known for running really fast, which makes me wonder if it's possible to beat one of his games without running at all. And I want to do this properly. None of this 2D nonsense. I'm going to attempt this in Sonic's first venture into 3D. No, no, no. That game wasn't even finished. Sonic Adventure. I'm talking about Sonic Adventure. Can you beat Sonic Adventure without running? But first, what can and can't I do? Obviously, I can't trigger Sonic's running animation. I mean, that's the whole point of the challenge, so that's obvious. Everything other than that, though? Fair game. Spin dashes, jumps, spin dash jumps, everything is fine, so long as I don't run. A trick I used extensively throughout this run was pressing the spin dash button while Sonic was in his ball. This causes him to uncurl and, if done in midair, loses momentum. I did this as much as possible to minimize the chance of running when Sonic hit the ground. If I end up running at any point, I must restart from the last checkpoint. Despite this, I tried beating the game without using any checkpoints, and just started from the beginning of the level if I ever ran. I'll explain why I stopped doing this later on. Now that all that is out the way, let's start the run. After some opening cutscenes with the best voice direction ever, we start the game with the first boss, Chaos Zero. Yeah, he's a joke. No surprises here. Not being able to run doesn't really hinder me in any way during this fight. Two homing attacks, a bit of spin dashing about, and a third homing attack puts him down. Really nothing special. We move on to see Sonic witness an eight-year-old boy plummet to his death. And of course, he has to go over to the crash site to retrieve the body. We're going to need that for the funeral. Because of this, we end up in the first level, Emerald Coast. This is the first real test of the run, although it still isn't too bad. A lot of it is just hoping Sonic doesn't uncurl from his ball whenever he hits a dash pad, which happened quite a lot throughout this run, you'd be surprised. The whale chase is the first roadblock of the game, since while spin dashing at the start gets a fair way through it, we have a problem with the first ramp since Sonic lands directly onto a dash pad because of it. If Sonic lands directly on a dash pad, he immediately goes into his running animation, so we need to find a way around it. Initially, I just tried jumping directly to the next segment of the bridge, but I'd often end up being hit by the whale and dying, or just end up running anyway. It took a few attempts, but I found out by complete accident that Sonic can bounce off the whale when he's in his ball form. I've been playing this game for pretty much all of my life and I never knew that. Granted, it's a very weird thing to happen, but I'm glad it does since I can use it to bounce my way safely to the other side and continue on with the rest of the level. With proper planning, the rest of the level isn't challenging at all. It gets a bit shaky at points, don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm practically praying that Sonic doesn't uncurl during this section. I even took the lower path just to be a bit safer. At this section, all I have to do is jump to not run on the wall and skip the loop, but I'm an idiot, so I didn't do that. After I stopped being an idiot and, you know, jumped, I got a bit lucky with this ramp and skipped a small section. A couple more spin dashes and we reached the crash site. Tails is alive, which is probably a good thing, and he tells us to go to the Mystic Ruins. I'm just going to say right now that I'm not going to dwell on the hub world sections very much since they're very easy to move around and aren't very long. There are a few exceptions, however, which I'll get to when they come up. We make our way to the Mystic Ruins and go to Tails' workshop where we meet Eggman for the first time. And here we are at the second boss, the Egg Hornet. After spin dashing around for a bit, I went in for the first hit and... Okay, moving on. Tails was with one of the MacGuffins because of course he does, and we have to go to Windy Valley to get another one. But first, I need to put the windstone in the right place. And oh boy, this sucked. You can't spin dash while holding things, so the only way to move this stupid rock is to throw it, and then pick it up, and then throw it, and then pick it up, and then throw it. Do you see how tedious this is? Anyway, after losing my sanity, I found myself in Windy Valley. Just gonna say right now, this level is comfortably the worst part of this run. I spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to beat it, and the major reason for this is these wind bridge things that are across the level. Sonic can only run on these things, so we can't use them, but there's one pretty much immediately at the start, so I had to improvise. And by improvise, I mean spin dash through this wall. Yep, nothing wrong here. This is Sonic Adventure as I remember it. Spin dashing through this wall actually leads to Gamma's part of the level, which, with some careful spin dashing, let's just skip the first wind bridge to make our way to the tornado. Travelling up the tornado isn't much different than a regular playthrough, so there's no problem there. We transition to the third act of the stage, and this is the main reason why Windy Valley was painful to beat. There's another wind bridge in this section, and it's right before the end of the level, so it's unavoidable. To solve this problem, we have to search through speedruns for this game, where we find out there's a massive skip for this part of the stage. The massive skip involves spin dashing off this platform and then avoiding death planes to reach the end. I don't know if you can tell, but this is difficult. First, the location where you spin dash off the platform is very precise. If you're in the wrong spot, you don't launch properly, and even if you do, you need to homing attack here and avoid death planes. Where are the death planes? No. I don't know. 
I just moved Sonic and hoped he didn't die. I have a vague idea, don't get me wrong. I knew I had to move left and then diagonally right, but it felt random every time I attempted this. And keep in mind that every time I failed this skip, I had to restart from the beginning of the level, meaning I had to spin Nashu that wall again, which didn't always go well. Eventually, after about a month of attempts, and I'm not joking there, this literally took me a month, Sonic lands directly on the Chaos Emerald. Before getting to the next level, we have a bit of busy work to do, and by busy work, I of course mean upgrades. We make our way to the sewers to grab the light speed dash, which is easy enough, and then we get the crystal ring, which I know isn't mandatory, but I've played this game for so long that I can't stop myself from getting it. There's not that much space here because of the ceiling, but I managed just fine. Now that the upgrades are out of the way, we make our way to the next level, Casinopolis. Thankfully, this level just consists of grabbing 400 rings and depositing them in the bank, so it's a nice easy ride. You can do out of bounds shenanigans to finish earlier, but to be honest, I was so drained from Windy Valley that I just wanted to chill out and play some pinball. Can you blame me? I mean, you can't mess up pinball, right? No, not Shadow Fever! It takes a while, but I get the 400 rings and grab the emerald to finish the level. And upon grabbing the emerald, we immediately lose it to Eggman, because why not? The plot needs to progress in some way, I guess. When Sonic wakes up, we see that we need the ice stone to open the entrance to the ice cap. I thought the windstone was bad, but this... I'm not having fun. After more fun gameplay, we're at ice cap. First off, gotta hope the first dash pad doesn't kill the run. An interesting stage overall, mostly because you can skip most of it with some well-placed spin dash jumps. The whole first section is easily skipped, and the second section can be skipped as well by clipping through the bridge. This can be done from the first platform, but I'm bad at video games, so I didn't bother trying. However, I did want to do it because why not? It looks cool. It's a lot easier to clip through and on this ice bridge, so a spin dash and a homing attack clips us through the bridge and onto the snowboard section. Now one problem here is that a little cutscene plays to show an avalanche falling and in this cutscene Sonic takes a few steps. Just because I can, I chose to avoid this by clicking restart as I enter this section which skips the cutscene completely. Technically this is me using a checkpoint but I'm not using it because I ran or I died so it's fine by me. And if you have a problem with me doing this, I present you this image to show you how much I care. You got that? Good? The rest of the level is easy mostly because, well, I have no option to run. With one exception, when Sonic gets off the snowboard. He starts running, so I had to slow down to basically a standstill before getting off the thing, which was awkward. With that done, we have another one of the MacGuffins, which I'm sure will hold on to longer than the last one. Next is the Knuckles fight. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. After dealing with him, we moved off. For the love of- we just got that emerald. What's the point of getting these things just to lose them in the next cutscene? Anyway, Chaos 4. This fight sucks. It's slow, it's not engaging, and he poses no threat to you. It's just a matter of spin dashing around the place until he surfaces and then you bonk him on the head. Just repeat that for a bit and there's your boss fight. Terrible, not difficult, not even with the restrictions of this run. After defeating his water god very easily, Eggman decides to show us what he's packing and fires off for us to chase him. Tails fires up the tornado and we're on our way. Sky chase. I can't physically run even if I wanted to, so... Yeah. Just for fun, I wanted to see if I could clear this without moving the plane and well... I could. Just spamming the fire button throughout the whole thing worked. At the end of Sky Chase, we get shot down, meaning this is the second time Tails would crash a plane in this game. Hey, I'll cut him some slack, he's only 8. Sonic falls 30,000 feet and is perfectly fine because, why not, I guess the sand softened his fall. Sonic dusts himself off and we end up bumping into Amy, and side note, why is Amy's theme so weird? Why is she shaving a cat? Why does Sonic remind her of Parsley? Why is she going to paint herself blue? It's almost as bad as Knuckles getting it on by himself. Who translated these lyrics? After meeting Amy, it's time to go to Twinkle Park because why not? I've heard they have good roller coasters. Oh, and Amy goes there to avoid a robot, so I guess we have to follow her and make sure she's safe. First section, no problem at all. It's no different than a regular run through. It just takes a bit of time. The real challenge begins after this. There is a massive shortcut that can be taken that skips to the end of the level. I'm terrible at video games, so I'm taking the long route. And by god, this level is frustrating. There's just so many little things in this stage that can catch you out, and it's maddening because one little misstep, and I have to do the whole car section all over again, and that's like a minute and a half each time I mess up. That being said, if I had just taken my time through this level, I probably would have finished it a lot earlier than I did. A couple games of bowling, a few basic jumps, this isn't the problem with this level. The main problem is this last part, which you normally light speed dash through, but you can spin dash up the wall, so I tried that. Like I said, I'm bad at this. Eventually, I realized it's a lot easier to do a bit further along the ledge, so I just did the jump there. And then it's the last area. I just had to hope I didn't do something stupid. 
I may have forgot to mention I'm also an idiot. I decided to be competent at video games for long enough to reach the capsule and complete the level. After spending some time playing some more bumper cars, we eventually leave Twinkle Park. And oh boy, my favourite part of the game. It's actually not a problem at all here, as the car's about 5 feet away from where it needs to be. We slowly get into the elevator and now we're in Speed Highway. First, I'm just going to be straight up, we need to do a skip in this level. Because of these... Things. What are these things? Whatever they are, they always cause Sonic to run whenever he exits one. And there's one that you have to go through on the main path, so... And here we go, all we need to do is go off to the right at the start of the level, spin dash up a building, and then spin dash jump to the right. I'm not gonna lie, this was a hit and miss for me. And even when I did do the jump, I ended up on the wrong side of the fence. However, this game was coded by geniuses. So you're able to homing attack through the fence. Or more accurately, in my case, homing attack over the fence. How did I do that? After the skip, we find ourselves at this corkscrew, which, before doing this level, I was kind of dreading, since I thought Sonic was going to unroll a lot midway through. It didn't take me long to realise that simply spin dashing into it and letting go of the analog stick caused Sonic to go through it with no problem. And even if he couldn't, there's an area below, and despite the fact I've played this game for the majority of my life, I never knew this area existed. Wait, first Emerald Coast, now Speed Highway. I know it sounds crazy, but I always assumed there was a bottomless pit here. I mean, can you blame me? There are bottomless pits everywhere else. After going through the corkscrew and jumping over these dash pads because I'm paranoid, we progress through the stage as normal to the going down section. And unbelievably, this section isn't difficult at all. All you need to do is spin dash as soon as you hit the side of the building. After that, Sonic stays in his ball all the way down, so onto the next section. Ah yes, the part with a very good music. I played it very safe all the way through here. At this point, I was just worried about replaying the whole level again if I messed up. In terms of challenge, it's no problem at all. I just stayed on the ground and got run over a couple times. After being flattened, we used the fountain to get to the capsule, and that speed highway, done. Oh right, Amy! I kind of forgot we were trying to save her. Well, the robot has her now, so we gotta chase them. And, well, they're gone. The only logical thing to do now is chase a moving aircraft on foot, because that will work, right? Wait a minute. Didn't this also happen in- Darn, No! But before doing that, we get the light speed attack so we can enter the next level. Hey, it's a very important upgrade. We use it, like, one more time after this. We get rid of the guard, and here we are. Red Mountain. Why are we watching it get away? This level is surprisingly simple. It's not much more different than a regular playthrough. Genuinely, I was shocked. No skips needed, no difficult sections. Yeah, the level's a bit long, but this wasn't hard at all. You can spin dash over a lot of the first half, and one thing I love about this game is how many different paths you can take. I mean, using the light dash here skips out a section that probably would have been a bit troublesome for me. It doesn't take as long to get to the underground section, which, don't get me wrong, still wasn't that difficult, but it was really finicky. It was mostly the terrain. There was a lot of times where Sonic just unrolled because he hates me, but ultimately, yet again, this wasn't much different than the regular playthrough. And before you know it, we're at the end of the level. And hey, Tails didn't die, and he's here to pick us up. What was Sonic planning on doing here? I mean, he had no idea Tails was going to be here, so what did he think he was going to accomplish by chasing the egg carrier on foot? Tails picks us up, and oh boy, Sky Chase 2 Electric Boogaloo. Why did they do two of these? They're just a chore to play through when replaying the game. And yet again, just like the first time, I just stayed still and spammed fire, even through the boss. Moving on from that, Tails relays to us that he didn't put any landing gear in a new form of the tornado. Wait a minute. You had time to install a claw that moved Sonic out of the way when you transformed, but you didn't put in any landing gear? Tails! You're supposed to be clever! Upon crash landing, we see Eggman show off by rearranging his ship, which means we have to go through the sky deck to progress. I do not like this stage. I think it's comfortably the worst one in the entire game normally. And with that said, this was quite a pain to do without running. And the annoying thing about it was that no part of the stage was difficult on its own. It's just a lot of minor inconveniences that added up along the run. Despite the fact I spent a long time trying to beat this stage, there's not much I can really point out because on the surface, it's not much different than a regular playthrough. Either way, I'll try and go through the stage. The first part with the cannons was easy, just spin dash over the barriers. After the first checkpoint, I decided to go to the right as going forward takes us to a section with a lot of dash pads, which is quite unreliable to do without running. I then kept going and went around this way to skip yet another section, which was a bit finicky. I chose to jump down to the lower section simply because there was less things going on down there. You know, less enemies and the like. Getting to the rocket to disable the cannon wasn't difficult at all. However, it did catch me out a few times because Sonic unrolls when touching a wall. We destroy the cannon and move on to the next section. You know, I think if you looked up the word finicky in a dictionary, you'd probably just see a picture of this part of the level because wow. There are occasionally high winds which push Sonic all over the place and it gets really hard to control. This caused me to lose a lot of runs, and yet again, nothing in this section requires any complicated movement. It's just spin dashing, so why was it so hard? 
Thankfully, after getting to the ladder, we're met with an area with falling floors everywhere. Great. Honestly, though, this was simple to bypass. Spin dashing on the side is the quickest way to get past it, so I just did that. One ceremonial dance around a rocket before launching it sends it to the final section of the level. Most of this section can be skipped with some well-placed spin dash jumps. This includes the part with the messed up gravity and monkey bars, which is probably the worst part of the entire game. It is possible to spin dash from here directly to the capsule, but as I've already established in this video, I'm bad at video games, so I opted to do the safer route and spin dash to the floor. Gravity should change at this point, but there's just enough time to spin dash again up to the checkpoint. From here, you can fall down to the end section, hit the button, and pray to god you don't accidentally run because of the gravity changing. This leaves an open path to the capsule, and with that, Sky Deck is done. We make our way to the bridge to see Dr. Eggman pulling a Chaos Emerald from a Flicky. Where was the Flicky keeping that thing? Eggman sticks E102 Gamma on us, which I'm sure will lead to a competitive... This game is flawless. Oh boy, it's time to meet our maker. Not you. Foggy. It's time for Chaos 6. And it's a good thing Eggman's here, because this fight would be literally impossible without him dropping these ice things. Homing attack in the first one and just backing up causes Chaos 6 to freeze himself. A good tip for this fight is that the light speed attack does double the damage, meaning only two hits are needed to end the fight. Yeah, this is pathetically easy. The hardest part of the fight is just throwing another robot into Chaos, and even then, that isn't hard at all. After charging another light attack, Chaos 6 is defeated. After that anticlimactic boss fight, Sonic decides to hurl himself off the egg carry to chase Eggman and... Sonic? What? It's a good thing Sonic's the main character because he really should be dead at this point. He stays alive long enough to enter the next level, Lost World. Okay, it's time to talk about the checkpoints. I bring this up now because up until this point, I wasn't using any of them. I had to complete all the levels in one try without running. I decided to stop doing that at Lost World because this level took me seven minutes to beat. Every level before this lasted three minutes maximum, so I wasn't too bothered restarting from the beginning. Here though, no. I refuse. I don't have the patience for that. Another reason I started using checkpoints is because Lost World sucks. This is like Skydeck, only longer and more of a flick in the nuts. What's crazy is the most difficult part of this level is the tunnel at the start of the stage. How is a simple tunnel that was put in the game to pad out the level one of the most difficult obstacles in this entire run? Spin dashing and staying in a ball in this section was like performing open heart surgery with a blindfold on. The simplest touch of either wall uncurls Sonic and in turn makes him want to uncurl off a cliff. Once we get past that tunnel of misery, we're flung into a tube with fire all over the place. What is it with Lost Worlds and tubular level design? It's no problem. Well, except for the fact that it leads to another tunnel that has the exact same issues as the first one. Can you see why I started using checkpoints yet? Speaking of checkpoints, there's one at the end of this tunnel which I decided to use. The next part of this level is... awkward. Sonic doesn't seem to play well with the snakes, so it's best to minimize the amount of time on it. There's not much I can really say about this section. I played it pretty similar to how I normally would, with spin dash jumps to avoid riding the snake and hit the buttons quicker. Not much I can say. It's just a boring part of the level. Honestly, I'm just going to skip to the bowler section because everything from here up until then is pretty boring. It's just a bunch of spin dashing. Now I could try and roll all the way down away from the boulder, but to put it simply, no. You actually can't do that because the boulder's speed is tied to sonic speed. This means if you try to spin dash all the way down, you build up too much speed and get hit by the boulder. How do we fix this? Simple. We be polite and let the boulder go first. Don't get me wrong, this takes a while. About two minutes in fact, but it's by far the safest way to do this without running. And hey, there's a checkpoint right after this, so I didn't mind waiting. Now we're at the final part of the level. I know I've played it pretty safe so far, but to be honest, I wanted to show off it. Using the spin dash on these wall panels skips all the platforming. One light dash, a loop, and a weirdly placed transition later, and Lost World is finished. Ah yes. Genocide. After more story happens, Sonic sees Eggman and gives chase to his base. But first, a puzzle, which we eventually complete, and it leads us to the final level, Final Egg. The entire first section is no problem at all, with the slight exception of these rotating barrels, mostly because Sonic's gravity gets really messed up when he's on them. It took a couple attempts to realise that spin dashing across them was fine. A lot of this level is platforming in pretty slow sections. Yeah, I didn't want to do that, so I decided just to skip it. How do you do that? Well, right at the start of this next section, if you turn around, you can spin dash up to the top. From here, you can spin dash jump out of bounds and move Sonic towards this area. A lot of the levels in this game are very vertical and wrap around themselves. This means Sonic can fall to a much further point in the level. And honestly, that's all this level really has to offer. There is a possible skip at the start of the next section that skips the end of the level, but I found it much harder than the previous one, so I didn't bother. The rest of this level didn't have any Roblox. Well, except for the return of the tunnel. Spin dashing was more than capable enough to get through this stage. There wasn't even that many odd collisions that could mess me up. 
After the final light speed dash, the last level has been completed. However, it's not over yet. we have the final boss for Sonic Story to beat, the Egg Viper. This isn't difficult. Just spin dash out the way of the lasers and play the rest of the boss as normal. Don't get me wrong, the end of the fight is terrifying. I just have to hope I spin dash out the way. Other than that, this was no problem at all. Eggman goes up in flames and with that anticlimactic end, that concludes Sonic's story without running. Wow, this was certainly a journey. Was this frustrating? Yes, very frustrating at points. But I'll be lying if I said I didn't have fun whilst doing it. I honestly didn't think this challenge was possible when I started it. And don't get me wrong, I lost a lot of hope at Windy Valley. But overall, I enjoyed this. I wouldn't ever do it again, and I certainly wouldn't recommend trying this either. Maybe do it for one level for a laugh, but don't do a whole run through. You might be thinking, why did I do this? What was the point? Honestly, I like challenges in games, and I kind of found it funny to limit Sonic in a way that takes away a major aspect of his appeal. The fact that he runs fast is so ingrained in his character, I was curious to see what a game would look like if it was taken away. This wasn't what I meant! If you watched this far, I just want to say thank you. If you want to watch each level and boss in its entirety with no commentary, I've made a playlist that I'll link in the description down below. Of course you'd notice that I only did Sonic Story in this video. Will I ever do the other stories? I don't know. Maybe. If you enjoy what you watch, then maybe consider liking, subscribing. But at the end of the day, that's all I have to say. See ya.